What? I don't know. I have a feeling if Al Jazeera brought everybody, they'd fill the room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when you start the Al Jazeera French, I'll come and join you. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> All right. Greetings, Earthlings. Happy Monday. A uh, couple of programming notes for you. Uh, at 1 p.m., uh, our colleague Maher Nasser will be here uh, to brief you on the uh, conference that the Department of Global Communications will host together with civil society, which is a 2024 UN civil society conference in support of the Summit of the Future under the theme Shaping a Future of Global Sustainable Progress. Uh, this will take place on May 9th and 10th of this year at the United Nations office in Nairobi in Kenya. Um, then tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. there will be a briefing here sponsored uh, by our friends at the Permanent Mission of Ireland um, with the NGO Karama and Afghan Women's Forum, and that is back to uh, what is going on at CSW68. Um, and just to keep you busy... Uh, at 10.15, uh, we will have Jean-Martin Bauer, uh, who is the World Food Program Director in Haiti, uh, and he will be briefing you from Port-au-Prince to give you s an update on the situation there. Um, then, to keep you even busier, after our uh, daily uh, prayer meeting here at noon, uh, we will have a um, briefing by the UN Children's Fund with Yasmin Sharif, from Education Cannot Wait, uh, along with Oksan Lisovi, the Minister of Education and Science of Ukraine, and um, Yevan uh, Kudryavets, the first Deputy Minister of Education and Science of Ukraine. This morning, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, uh, spoke at the opening of the 68th session of the Commission on the Status of Women. He thanked the women from civil society for their work, saying he has been able to witness all over the world how their work is sparking progress on women's rights and briefing and benefiting communities. Mr. Guterres also warned that as the world is going through turbulent times, women and girls are being hit hard. He also noted that despite evidence that women's full participation makes peace building more effective, the number of women in decision-making roles is actually falling. The facts are clear, he said, women lead to peace. But uh, budgets and policies must follow with amb ambitious targets for women's participation and urgent investment in women's peace building. We must speak out loud and clear, he said, not on our watch, he added. His full remarks were shared with you. That meeting's still going on. And earlier this morning, uh, the Secretary General spoke to you. Uh, he, made, um, he said that even though Ramadan had begun, the killing and bombing and bloodsheds continue in Gaza. He appealed today for all sides to honor the spirit of Ramadan by silencing the guns and remo removing all obstacles to ensure the delivery of life-saving aid to the speed and massive scale required. At the same time, and in the Ramadan spirit of compassion, he called for the immediate release of all the hostages held in Gaza. Um, the Secretary General also renewed his appeal for Ram uh, Ramadan cessation of hostilities in Sudan, saying that the fighting there must end for the sake of the Sudanese people who face hunger, who face horror, and untold hardships. And earlier, we also issued a video message to Mark Ramadan in which the Secretary General said, in these trying times, the spirit of Ramadan is a beacon of hope, a reminder of our shared humanity, and he called on the spirit of the holy month to guide us towards a more just and compassionate world. Turning to the situation in Gaza, our colleagues of the World Health Organization and their partners telling us, told us they reached two hospitals in the northern part of the Gaza Strip, and those are Al Ali and Al Sahaba hospitals. That was done over the weekend. This followed an assessment mission to those two hospitals on Friday by our colleagues at OCHA, the UN Fund for Population, and the International Committee for the Red Cross. The WHO-led mission on Saturday delivered orthopedic and trauma items to about 150 patients, as well as 13 liters of fuel to Al Hali Hospital. The team also reached Al Sahaba Hospital with 12,000 liters of fuel. In social media posts, uh, the Director General of WHO, Dr. Tedros, said both hospitals are functioning with limited capacity 
and lack fuel anesthetics, antibiotics, specialized staff, and critical supplies. He said we need sustained, safe access to health facilities to deliver life-saving health care on a regular basis. And later today, as you all know, at 3 p.m., the Security Council will convene for an open briefing on the situation in the Middle East. Um, special Representative for the Secretary General on Sexual Violence in Conflict, Pramila Patton, uh, will be briefing. And as obviously she is briefing on her uh, mission, she just uh, concluded to Israel. Um, Turning to uh, Haiti, uh, I can tell you that um, the chef de cabinet, Courtney Rattray, is in uh, Kingston in Jamaica, where he's representing the Secretary General at the high-level meeting organized by the Community of Caribbean States, uh, CARICOM. Uh, also with him there from the UN is uh, Atul Kare, the head of the uh, Department of Operational Services, and Miroslav Yencha, the Assistant Secretary General in the Department of Political and Peacebuilding Affairs. Our main message to the meeting is that, cr is, is that it is critical that we support the Haitian people with one voice towards finding rapidly a Haitian-led solution to the current grave crisis. The Secretary General continues to call on governments and all national stakeholders to agree on immediate steps to stop the ongoing deterioration of the situation in the country and to advance a political process that will lead to elections. He also continued to urge member states to accelerate ongoing plans to de deploy and, of course, adequately fund the multi-national uh, security support mission, which was, as you recall, authorized by the Security Council last October. Uh, and that mission is uh, needed to tackle the grave security needs of Haitians. Uh, you've also been asking me about the trust fund that is supposed to fund this mission. And uh, unfortunately, I can confirm to you that there, is, there are no new contributions so far to the trust fund. It still stands at 10.8 million American dollars. On the humanitarian end, our colleagues continue to do everything they can to deliver assistance to people in need, despite the risks for their own safety. Since the end of February, the World Food Program and its partners have delivered more than 50,000 meals to the people who have fled their homes. Uh, UNICEF and the International Organization for Migration have provided nearly 70,000 gallons of water and emergency shelter material. We, along with our partners, have also distributed 1,500 hygiene kits to sites where people uprooted by the violence are living. But that is, of course, not enough. We need unhindered, safe humanitarian access without any preconditions. Our humanitarian partners continue to report shortages of medicine and medical equipment, along with blood, beds, and staff to treat the patients who are coming into the hospitals with gunshot wounds from areas all around Port-au-Prince. The Humanitarian Needs Response Plan for Haiti, which called for $674 million, is only 2.6% funded. That means it only has $17.7 million in the bank. That is not enough. Uh, we urgently need funding to be able to help the people of Haiti. Uh, and obviously more on Haiti tomorrow at 10.15 uh, with the WFP country director, who's briefed you in the past and is indeed very good. Um, some travel where may interest some of you. The personal envoy of the Secretary General for Western Sahara, Stefan Dimistor, traveled to Moscow at the invitation of the Russian authorities um, today. Uh, he had discussions with Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and uh, the Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Vershinin on the issue of Western Sahara. Um, Turning to Ukraine, our colleagues for the Office of Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs tell us that attacks on the frontline regions over the weekend resulted in civilian casualties and damage to civilian infrastructure. It's in the Donetsk region in the east, in the city, in the city of Mirnorod, was particularly impacted after two attacks on the 8th and the 10th of March. Civilians, including children, were reportedly injured, and the homes of some 200 families were damaged. That's according to what authorities and our partners are telling us. Other towns in the region also sustained attacks with homes, hospitals, schools being damaged. That's also what uh, local authorities are telling us. Our partners have provided construction material, helping nearly 900 civilians whose homes have been damaged. 
Over the last three days, homes, schools, and civilian infrastructure were also reportedly damaged by attacks in the Kharkiv, in the Dnipro, Odessa, and Kherson regions, all according to national authorities. Uh, turning to Myanmar, where we are, um, our humanitarian colleagues are deeply concerned about the indiscriminate use of heavy weapons in residential areas that is posing grave risks and costing civilian lives in Rakhine State. On Saturday, a stray artillery shell landed in a residential area in the state capital of Sitwe, killing at least eight uh, civilians, uh, Rohingya civilians, and injuring 12 others, including five children. This is the second time in two weeks that a stray shell has killed people in Sitwe. These incidents take place amid intensifying fighting in Rakhine between the Myanmar Armed Forces and the Arakan Army. The situation has prompted a surge in the displacement across the state. More than 300,000 people are now displaced in Rakhine State. The tactics used by the parties to the conflict are harming civilians and undermining humanitarians' continued ability to deliver assistance to people in need. We remind all parties to the conflict of their obligations under international humanitarian law to protect civilians, including aid workers. And in Somalia, the deputy heads of OCHA um, and, the food, and the, the Food and Agriculture Organization have wrapped up their three-day visit to the country. Speaking in Mogadishu over the weekend, Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Joyce Masuya, said the humanitarian community will seek more international support for Somalia going forward as climate change continues to drive up needs with women and girls bearing the brunt of the crisis. Ms. Masuya also uh, warned, the lives, warned that the lives of millions of people hang in the very tight balance, adding that this year's humanitarian response plan will seek to reach 5.2 million people with life-saving assistance. And staying in uh, the general region in Chad, we, along with our partners together with the government, today launched the 2024 Humanitarian Needs Response Plan, which seeks 1.1 US, 1.1 billion US dollars to help 4.6 million people in the country. The plan prioritizes food security and nutrition as Chad braces for what could be the worst lean season in more than a decade. As you'll recall, just a few weeks ago, the government declared a state of emergency due to the food security and malnutrition situation in the country. The 2024 Humanitarian Needs Response Plan, which is aligned with Chad's National Development Plan, also focuses on providing health care support for refugees and their host community in Chad. Since the start of the conflict uh, in neighboring Sudan last year, Chad has opened up its doors and welcomed more than half a million refugees, which has significantly strained the humanitarian situation in the east of the country. Meanwhile, attacks by non-state non armed groups in the Lake Chad region basin are driving further internal displacement. Last year, humanitarian community managed to assist 3.5 million people, despite receiving just one-third of the $920 million we'd asked for. And lastly, just for the record, you saw over the weekend, we issued a statement marking yet another sad and grim anniversary in Syria, which is uh, 13, it's 13 years of conflict. During these years, the people of Syria endured unprecedented devastation and displacement, and today, three out of every four people need humanitarian aid. In the statement, the Secretary General said it is long past time for key parties to step up and meet the legitimate aspiration of the Syrian people. He underscored the importance for everyone to do their utmost to reach a genuine and credible political solution that restores the sovereignty, the unity, and the independence, and the territorial integrity of Syria in accordance with Security Council Resolution 2254, and that it creates the conditions necessary for the voluntary return of refugees in safety and in dignity. The Secretary General also stressed that we need to find, we need urgent and adequate funding to sustain our life-saving humanitarian operations, including early recovery. Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, two questions. First, this morning, uh, the Secretary General reiterated his call for a Ramadan ceasefire in Sudan. Um, the Rapid Support Forces accepted a ceasefire on Friday. 
the government um, put a whole bunch of conditions on um, any kind of a ceasefire. Um, are any discussions, talks between the two sides going on, and is Mr. LaRamra um, involved at all? Uh, I'm not aware that he is. Uh, we do hope uh, that both sides agree on uh, silencing their guns uh, during Ramadan at the very uh, least. Uh, you know, as I'm reading all these notes on the humanitarian situation in Sudan, in Gaza, in Myanmar, in Haiti, um, first of all, it's rather depressing. Um, and we keep asking for the same things, right? People to put aside their differences uh, for an end to uh, for an end to the violence and for this unhindered uh, and free access for humanitarian aid for those who need it. Um, secondly, on Haiti, um, can we get a readout later today of um, what's happening with yes. CARICOM in Kingston, the meeting, and uh, what? Mr. Rattray and the Assistant Secretary yep. Generals are accomplishing. We have preemptively asked in anticipation of your question. I have, and I would just like to make a comment and put on the record that the first five speakers at the Commission on the Status of Women this morning were men. And Achim Steiner, the head of UNDP, who was the fifth, actually took notice of this, as did the first female speaker. I, I think that was clear for all to see. Uh, Madam. Uh, I wanted to ask about the uh, leak, about the honor roll report from Reuters uh, two days ago. Has the SG seen the report, and what is his reaction? I mean, he's 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 aware of the of the of the the report. He's very disturbed by it, and our understanding is that uh, on, our, our colleagues have shared it uh, with the Israeli authorities, and we would like to see uh, investigation and accountability. I mean, has this been brought up with the Israeli authorities? I My understanding is that on has brought it up with the Israeli authorities. And are there any steps being taken to support the staff who, are alleged, who were allegedly tortured? I mean, tortured? Our, our, our UNRWA colleagues are providing whatever psychosocial support they can for their own colleagues. Uh, Deji, then Maggie. Uh, this morning, Secretary General's statement on the Ramadan, he urged for a ceasefire. Uh, what is reaction that, act, it, it, as a matter of fact, there is no ceasefire still yet in Gaza? What, what's the reaction? I mean, the reaction the, the is, one is, you I mean, I, I, I don't, the reaction is uh, continued uh, tragedy uh, for the civilians in Gaza, continued tragedy for those hostages who are continuing to be held uh, in Gaza, and he very much hoped that others will echo his call and that his call will be listened to. Does he, does he feel disappointed that no one's, really listen to, to well, I the mean, international he, communities. You know, it's not about him, his personal feelings. Uh, he's disappointed that the suffering is continuing um, in all of these places I've talked about no, uh, uh, today. Okay, uh, any update on the, the UN's role in the temporary peer construction humanitarian delivery? No, sounds like a great question uh, to be asked at the Pentagon. Senor, oh sorry, Mike, oh sorry, Mike. Um, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Sorry. Do you have an OIOS update on their internal investigation of UNRWA? No, I mean, as, uh, if my calendar is right, they should be in Israel this week uh, at, with a working uh, meeting with Israeli uh, counterparts. So to date, no handover of this dossier of evidence to the UN? Let, let's, let's be clear. There has been no uh, further handover of of information by the Israeli authorities to UNRWA, right? I I'm, don't know what may be handed over or discussed between OIOS and the Israeli authorities. And one more. The Israeli foreign minister is in the building today for uh -huh. a 3 p.m. Security Council meeting, but I don't see him on the Secretary General's schedule uh, today. No meeting was requested? No. Hi, Steph. Again on Haiti. 
Two questions. Uh, the European Union today has announced they are evacuating their personnel in Haiti. Is the UN doing no. at no, all? We are taking whatever Europe. measures to keep our staff safe, uh, but there is no uh, no movement, outward movement of UN staff uh, out of Haiti. Uh, we're stay, staying and working with our Haitian partners and trying to do whatever we can, most importantly for the Haitian people. And do you have any information where Ariel Henry is and if he is expected today in the CARICOM meeting? I, we are tracking him like you are tracking him through media reports. Uh, if he appears in CARICOM and uh, we find out about it and I'm able to share, I will, but I've not seen any new, uh, new, new information. Abdel Hamid, and then we'll go that way. Thank you. I have two questions. I asked the SG this morning, but he left the podium. Why he doesn't try to go visit Gaza? Uh, why? Uh, any, really trav any travel uh, by the Secretary General will be announced in time. I think, as you know, there have been a lot of UN, uh, I mean, a good number of UN senior officials who've needed to be there uh, for operational uh, reasons. But it's, if we have something to announce, we will share with you. My second question. On the statement issued by Thor Winsland on the anniversary of the fifth month of the war, he said the following, and be patient, one line. No, I, 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 no, 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 this is very uh, important. What, 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 I, Can you I, be I, patient with me? I'm, I'm, I think I am very, I, I am very patient. No, but ask the question. Would, Go I, ahead. I would draw my question. No, no, ask the question, okay. Abdel Hamid. He said, we need an end to this misery now, one that will lead to the immediate release of all hostages and a ceasefire. The SG always says ceasefire and the release of hostages. Why Mr. Thor Winsland said release of all hostages first and then the ceasefire? Which comes first? Which is uh, most Ab needed? Abdel, Abdel Which Hamid, is most needed uh, uh, now? I've been very, I'm patient with you. You asked your question. I will tell you the same thing over again. Please call M Mr. Venislan's office. He said what he said. I think the, the idea in his statement and the Secretary General's statement are the same. No, no, no. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, Benny, Ephraim, Nabil, Linda, Gabriel. Uh, two questions. First, about the uh, Israeli foreign minister. Yep. Did he re first about the Israeli yep. foreign minister? Did he request the meeting? No, the no, SG? no meeting. Did no, the I, SG? I, 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 no, the, no meeting was requested from the Israeli uh, mission, is, and the SG did not request a meeting with. Is him. that unusual? No, I mean, I mean, by which standards? I mean, is is there an, an, uh, uh, an effort by the Israeli government not to meet with the Secretary General? Boycotting the Secretary General? Benny, uh, like I told Deji to ask the Pentagon, I would ask you to ask the Foreign Ministry. Okay, second question. But I, and I would add that we speak to, uh, we, are, we speak to Israeli, uh, our Israeli counterparts, uh, especially on the ground on a daily, if not hourly basis, we continue to have uh, operational contacts and we speak to the people we need to speak to. Yeah, but you're aware that there's quite a lot of anger in Israel I, over the Secretary I, I, General. I, I too read the media. Second question about the Secretary General's uh, um, speech this morning or statement this yep. morning. He said, um, and this is something that he had said before, actually since the beginning of the war, that uh, uh, that the, what's happening in Gaza is unprecedented during his time as Secretary General. Uh, you just read a statement that said that the situation in Syria is unprecedented. Obviously, you also referred to uh, Sudan, which is uh, not precedented. Is the use of unprecedented in this case a little uh, overwrought? Uh, you know, I think we can, uh, we, I, I will leave it to all of you uh, to do your analyse de text and analyse what uh, the Secretary General said. I think what when he has said, and, and in, in terms of the, the level of, of deaths uh, that we have seen uh, in Israel and in, in Gaza, is that the, the, the number in this short amount of time is the highest that he has since he's become, seen, since become Secretary General in any one conflict. So there are precedents, but not in this short time? Well, he, he said since becoming Secretary General. 
Well, this war in Syria was during his time as Secretary but it did, General. But he has not been Secretary General for 13 years as far as... I've been here now. This is my 10th anniversary here at this podium. Really? Since, uh, since only Act 10th? Two? Yes. Are you only sure Act, yes. that, Steph? I mean, yes. No, I know. Um, it seems more... So he has not been Secretary General for 13 years. Uh, Ephraim. Thank you, Steph. Um, two questions. The fact-finding mission on Iran... Uh, has found that the violent repression of peaceful protests and the discrimination yep. against women and girls there has enabled uh, crimes against humanity and human rights violations. Uh, does the Secretary General have any um, uh, commentary on this report? I, I think he thinks it's a very, uh, it's a very important report uh, done by the fact-finding mission appointed by, uh, by the Human Rights Council. And as you know, the Secretary General has raised the issue of human rights in Iran repeatedly uh, in his meetings with senior Iranian officials. Yes, and on Syria, I know I read the statement also, and you just said it, but the Commission of Inquiry also on Syria has yeah. released its report, um, unprecedented, actually, the violence in the past four months uh, by all parties, including the Syrian government dropping cluster munitions on densely populated areas hitting hospitals, schools, markets, and camps for displaced Syrians, which is a pattern that's been ongoing in the past decade. Uh, any co specific comments on that report? I mean, th and, uh, this, uh, again, I think these are very, these show how important these tools are uh, to the international community, these, uh, the, these commissions. Uh, for our part, I think the Secretariat has been uh, talking about and condemning very openly since the beginning of this conflict uh, all attacks uh, against civilians in Syria. Uh, Nabil, Linda, then Gabriel, then Thank Benno, you. and then we'll go on. Thank you, Stefan. So um, uh, we've seen that uh, a number of uh, humanitarian convoys could not reach uh, their destinations inside Gaza. Uh, uh, for many reasons, but part of the reasons is that uh, Hamas police uh, or Hamas government's police is not f functional maybe anymore. So uh, does the Secretary General uh, believe that uh, uh, the convoys need to be escorted by any kind of police or force or, or, or military I, the, presence? The, con the convoys need to have some sort of security. Right, and uh, for for quite some time, there was the, the de facto authorities provided some security to the co to the convoys. Um, we see what happens, and we've seen with our own convoys what happens when there is no security. Frankly, sometimes the trucks can't move uh, can't move from the crossing. Uh, some of the trucks have been um, people have taken aid because they've been stuck at checkpoints for a long time, and they don't know when the aid is going to come again, and they, they act in, in a way that is understandable. Uh, some of them have been uh, looted by, uh, by criminal gangs. Humanitarian convoys need some sort of security. So what, what kind of ideas the Secretary General is well, I mean, the, uh, these discussing are, these now? Are issues, these are issues that we've been discussing mm. on the ground with the, with the Israeli counterparts and others. So you think other member, member states can play any role in, in uh, I don't know, any deployment, any, Look, any support? I, I think the, the, the deployment of, uh, you know, uh, other security forces, I think something that's been discussed, but it's something that would need quite a lot of preparation. It would need various mandates. So what we need is, is, is solutions today not in a few, I mean, you see, you see with Haiti, right? You see, we, we called for this, the, the vote for the force was, was approved in October, and we're now, what, March 11th. Yeah, but I'm asking because now we have a draft resolution discussed in the Security Council. Is this, or could this be a good opportunity for the Secretary General to share some ideas? To so support we, we, the, we've the we've convoys. shared a lot of practical ideas. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the ground to try to move things quickly. Uh, Such as? Increased security, looking at very diff different options for increased security for our convoys. Uh, Linda, then Gabriel, then Benno, then Sahar, then Stefano, and then we'll get there. Thank you, Steph. <clears throat> Following up on the 
I guess you could say non-meeting between the Israeli foreign minister and the SG. I was just wondering, um, has the SG met with any high-level uh, Israeli officials here in New York? Uh, Since he, October 7th. Yeah, they've been, they've been visits of others coming from, um, uh, from Israel. There have been some officials also coming from the U.S., uh, from the Israeli embassy in Washington. And one other question in terms of the norm, if there is one. In general, does the SG invite um, foreign ministers, high-level senior officials from various countries that are particularly in conflict in other words, does he reach out if there's a high-level person from, a, say, for example, Ukraine? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's, invite, it's, you like, know. Um, it's like any other meeting you'd want to have. Sometimes people, I mean, off, often, you know, when visiting officials come to New York, they will request a meeting with the Secretary General. Not always, because sometimes he's seen people in other contexts uh, before, uh, and sometimes he, he will reach out. Uh, Gabriel, <laughs> sorry. It's all right. Thanks, thanks, Steph. Uh, housekeeping issue: uh, Is the Secretary General going to be meeting with Joseph Burrell this evening? Uh, yes, I think uh, Burrell is on his uh, schedule for today, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. The, or tomorrow. Or tomorrow. I, he's. Uh, you're asking me too many operational details at this early hour of the day. Okay. But I will find. It's not secret information. I will let you know. No problem. If there, if. If and when he does meet him, we can get a readout of that. We can try. Yep. Thank you. Um, on Haiti, a quick follow-up from a Friday question on Haiti. Do you have any update on the deployment of the multinational security support mission? No. I mean, the only update, uh, the only update I have for you is the fact that we're still at ten million and change in the um, in the trust fund. Uh, but I have no op no other details to share with you. Okay, and just a follow-up on the. Um, this floating dock causeway. I know you don't have anything to do with it. I'm not asking you about its construction or anything related to that. What, you, what are you asking me about? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the Department, U.S. Department of Defense said over the weekend that it would take up to 60 days to move the ship to the region and then another seven to 10 days to build it. My question to you is, uh, how does that information inform the UN's decision on how they will use this potentially to distribute aid to the people that I mean, need it in Gaza. That's one of the reasons we've said we're, you know, we, we, we welcome all these initiatives to increase aid. But in our, from where we stand, there is no alternative for a, a rapid land-based increase of humanitarian aid coming into Gaza. From from other from other uh, crossing points using the Ashdod port, which already exists. Um, so, obviously, it's good that there is more aid coming in and in the pipeline. But we need things now. And this is not anything that's going to be even close to now, given we're looking at weeks. It sounds like a statement, no. uh, Benno. Thank you, Steph. By the way, the European Union says uh, the meeting Borrell and Guterres is uh, Monday evening. Okay. Yes, it is. Um, I'm, uh, thank you for confirming what I've been told, but thanks. Um, yeah, we were not fact sure. So, DPP, yeah, so I have also DPP, questions. Yeah. Um, does the Secretary General have any comment to the results of the parliamentary elections in his home country, uh, Portugal, where right-wing party uh, got 18%, which is a lot? Would it surprise you if I told you no? Okay, about Edie's comment about the uh, CSW event and the male speakers, this just happened last Friday, as no. you know, with the International Women's Day, and maybe you agree with me that it's not like a great look, at least. Uh, shouldn't somebody look into it and how these events are These planned? are member state-driven events, right? I mean, mem it, it, ask, ask the question to the chair of the CSW. Ask the question to the member states who organize uh, these, these events. Sahar. Thank you. Um, I know you said that the UN's stance is that you guys are going to stay in Haiti. But um, if it comes down to the point where the situation gets so extreme, would the UN in Haiti even have the operational capacity right now to evacuate its foreign staff if it came to that? Uh, it, it wouldn't surprise you, hard that we're not going to talk about 
uh, hypothetical uh, situation. The security of our staff, whether it's in Haiti or anywhere else we operate uh, at a high level of, uh, of tension, is evaluated on a day-by-day -day basis, uh, and decisions are, are made. Uh, are made in relation to, to the security situation. So uh, I can only speak to what is going on today is that our staff is staying in Haiti. Thank you. Uh, Stefano, then Sinan. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, yesterday, the Secretary General did um, a, a long, a very interesting interview on the Italian uh, television. Uh, I, I saw it, it was very good. But there is one part that I, uh, at least myself, I, I, I'm not sure if I understood exactly what he's thinking about it. It's about the Security Council reform, where he restated the necessity for um, the need for Africa to be more represented. Uh, he said that he doesn't believe that, that the veto power can be eliminated, but again, it's not clear if when he's talking about Africa more represented, if he's talking about then a, a permanent a seat, but then who, what country, or just more I, I think uh, <coughs> the Secretary General has often spoken about uh, the need for African uh, representation on the Council. All of those issues uh, will be dealt with uh, and will have to be dealt with by member states. Uh, Sinan, and then we'll go to round two. Yeah. Thank you. Just a quick follow-up since Efrem asked my question. Uh, UN report says Iran committed crimes against humanity during protest mm -hmm. crackdown caused death of Kurdish woman Mastajina Amini in 2022. But on the other hand, Iran condemns UN reports and they said that the case was not investigated by independent mm -hmm. investigators. And what's the Secretary General's Look, response? The, these, all of these commissions set up by the, in, whether it's fact-finding missions and commissions of inquiry, di different models set up by the Human Rights Council, uh, have a very important role to play. I think it is important that all member states cooperate with them. From what I understand, and I hope I'm not mistaken, is that the, uh, this fact-finding mission was not able to go to Iran, uh, but they did, they they did their report using the sources uh, sources that they they, they used uh, that were legitimate uh, sources, and you know I think it is always best for member states to cooperate uh, with these mandates. Uh, Abdel Hamid, uh, thank you again, Stefan. Um, today, uh, the first day of Ramadan, hundreds of settlers stormed the Al Aqsa Mosque, and you know this day many. People dedicate their day, whole day, for prayer. Do you have any comment on that? We're always very concerned about uh, any provocation uh, in the holy sites in Jerusalem. There is a status quo uh, that needs to be uh, observed and respected. Uh, Nabil, then Margaret, then Ibtissam. <clears throat> Back to Gaza, have you uh, or any UN agency uh, mobilized or prepared uh, humanitarian resources in Cyprus to be shipped to Gaza? Uh, we have, uh, Sigrid Cog has people on the ground in, uh, in the port in Larnaca in Cyprus. Uh, I'm not aware of, in terms, I'm, I'm not aware in terms of what uh, goods may be shipped through that road, if those will include UN. Uh, goods, but I can try to find out. And this will be under uh, her mandate or WFP uh, or OSHA? I mean, the people that are there are under her mandate given as, as senior humanitarian coordinator. Margaret. Uh, just to follow up on my Haiti question about uh, Mr. Henri, um, you have three senior UN officials at the CARICOM meeting. Nobody mm -hmm. has told you whether they've seen him or not. I like mean, the building, literally, the, 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 the meeting started, I think, about an hour, an hour ago or so. Uh, I will try to reach one of these senior people, but I'm sure if they'd seen Henri, hopefully somebody would have told me. But, hey, again, nobody tells me anything. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Ibtissam, and I think we will close there. Um, I have a few follow-ups. So first, on this uh, Cyprus uh, ship, so... I mean, is it going to go to Asdod port or? It, it, the, it, it, these are very, very valid questions. The ship, the, the, the ship 
that is sailing from uh, Cyprus, I expect it to sail from Cyprus, because as far as I know, it hasn't left yet, uh, is not being coordinated uh, by us. So you would have to ask one of the two NGOs who are organizing it uh, to see where it will be going. Okay, and another follow-up on the um, UNRWA report um, and the, the allegation that um, uh, that these confessions were taken under torture. In this case, isn't it, because you talked about, in your answer, you said that there should be investigation. And my question is, when it comes to um, allegation regarding torture that happened against UN stuff, isn't it the UN that also supposed to have its own I think investigation? The, the two things are not mutually exclusive. Uh, as I've said uh, before, when this conflict ends, or when this phase of this conflict uh, ends, there will be boards of inquiries and there will be internal UN mechanism uh, to look at exactly what happened in terms of how UN staff were treated, uh, how UN staff died, and how UN property uh, was destroyed. Um, last one. On the Sudan resolution that was adopted um, mm -hmm. Friday regarding mm -hmm. um, since, uh, cessation of hostilities, um, you talked about it before. Uh, my question is here is, who is actually responsible for implementing that resolution? I mean, does the Secretary General has a role there and his envoy, or is it uh, back to the court of the... Um, Security Council. Uh, I think the, the, the Secretary General's own responsibility are lined up, but it is obviously uh, what we want is to see both warring parties accepted, and what we want to see are all those countries that have an influence on either one of the two parties to use that influence in a positive way and push uh, for cessation of hostilities. Thank you, uh, and I would ask you to stay for Maher, who will be here in about five minutes. Thank you.